is like really sort of part four of my story into data. I'm beginning to discover a little bit more now. I had a really interesting chat with a Finnish guy called Juha. Uh, I can't pronounce his second name, so I'll put his name on the screen now. He's been working with 2D data for quite a number of years. He's helped people out, talking people through how to use the data. And he gave us a few intuitive ways of actually viewing the data out up on screen. And that's kind of what I'm going to show now, because obviously when you start to put lots of traces on the screen, it all times starts to get a lot of lots of channels, should I say, on the screen. It all starts to get a little bit messy and a bit confusing, particularly if you're looking at it on on a whole lap. But obviously, when you're looking at lots of information on, on lots of streams, you really do need to start to zoom in. And what do they say? The devil's in the detail. Basically, we're going to dig into it and go into a lot more detail, zooming into things. Uh, and the one thing you had told me and explained to me was how to get the best out of the interpretation of the screen so you can fit it in with your mind to try and get the image right in your head. And that's kind of what I've done here. And one of the things he also told me was basically how to arrange what you see on the screen so it kind of makes more sense. What we've got here on the screen now is quite a lot. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine data streams here, which or channels which are, which looks really confusing what would normally happen was a lot of the information would be kind of overlapping each other because it's basically putting the information out in a similar band on the screen so what you had told me was to move them to separate them uh, to different portions of the screen and sort of to link them in so what you effectively do is you create like a as, as it were a datum line which is in the center which is like a zero line in the center of the screen and you can try and picture it in your mind. If you're accelerating, it's a positive. So you'd put all of, all your throttle responses above the line, above that zero line. And anything to do with braking or deceleration, you put below the line. Um, and how you do that is still a little bit hard work to get my head round. But essentially what you do is you go into a particular data stream, open the channel itself up, and then what effectively you do, you alter the lower and upper limit. And that essentially, whatever region you set that for, it, it can move the data stream to being in, in a better place to, on the screen. It obviously takes a little bit of fiddling about to do that. But what happens then is, is much more intuitive when you actually see the image on the screen. So this is Navara still. It was a more or less a 147 flat lap of Navara. We've got the video to have a look at the particular corner we're going to feature on because obviously after we've talked about this in more detail the next natural step is to come up with a okay we know what's going on what do we have to do then to make a positive or negative effect what do we need to do on the change point of view so we'll talk about that a little bit later well whether it's a suspension change or an electronic setting you need to put into the bike something you have to change the bike as opposed to the way you're riding, or a combination of the two of them. Obviously, the data is telling you actually what's going on. You've got to then suck out of that data the feeling of what, what it is, then have a setting that you can mess about with and alter and change. We're going to have a look at the entry into turn six. Uh, turn five is, is a, a, like an over the hill, it's like a, over a slight rise, opening out right hander, and then it, you drop down slightly into turn six. It tightens up, it's fairly sharp acute right-hander onto effectively a, a back straight so it's important to get a good drive onto the straight because that's the speed that you're going to take down the straight so it's a it's not a momentum type corner it's much more arrive get the thing turned and fire it out so if i move my cursor along using the, the little dot here you can see it on the the small map there so we're going to use there to come in onto the getting the bike sat up and then effectively you just hit zoom, which is Z, and it zooms into that section of the track. Now, there's another inch, really interesting channel which you have told me about, and I didn't quite know how what it was telling me. And once it's set up, it's actually really clever. And it's this bottom one here, and it's effectively a form of a GPS accelerometer to show the rate of deceleration and acceleration on the bike. Again, it, it gives you a more of a, a, a graphic illustration of the acceleration of the bike. The purple line is showing effectively the rate of acceleration and also conversely the rate of deceleration into a corner. And the perfect is to get it as smooth as possible. Now, we've obviously zoomed in here and initially when you looked at it on, as the whole lap, as it were, it, it's a really 
crazy sort of amount of, of information which all blurs into itself. Once you start to zoom into one specific corner, even with a lot of data streams on that, it all starts to make a bit more sense. Now, the way now the data is displayed on the screen is you can see these two data streams here coming along. One is grip position, the other one is throttle position. So it's basically what the throttle is doing. And as you can see, the throttle drops off here to zero, closed throttle. And it's exactly now we're braking, which is this red line here. So it, you can see like throttle straight into brake. And then when you ease the brake back off, it then comes back on throttling out the corner. So that to me was it was a real step forward. It, it's so much more obvious when you see it like that, as opposed to see two lots of data all bashing away at the, at the bottom of the screen, which is initially what, how the screen was set up. So that was a, a really clever way of looking at it. This accelerometer data, that's the best way I can describe it, is showing the rate of deceleration. Now it's using GPS and it, the thing with it, it's, it's not absolutely pinpoint accurate. It's effectively ever so slightly behind the ball, but it does give a very good information reaction as it were. So as you can see, the throttle gets closed at this point comes to a zero, the GPS speed starts to drop off, that's this red line here. This particular red line here is obviously the brake. The brake's really hard and if we click on the brake, we can have a look at the cursor that will follow the brake. So you can see how the, the brake pressure is going up five bar and it goes right the way up to a, a peak of 10.5 bar. And then as we're approaching the corner itself, it's the, the trailing the brake off into the corner. This purple line, which is effectively a decelerometer, I'm probably using the wrong term there, but it's why I've kind of got it in my head, that's what it's about, is it's showing a rate of deceleration. So it's obviously the bike is slowing down. The steepness of the angle there is quite severe. And it gets down to a point at that peak of 11.65, uh, and it, it's meters per second per second from what I can gather on the screen. Now at 11.6, that's about, it's just over one G as far as I can remember, uh, which is quite a lot of braking. So you put a lot of braking force on it and how smoothly it's gone down there, apart from that small blip there is pretty good because what you ideally want to see on, on, de on streams like this is as smooth a line as possible because the smoother the line, the more continuous or the more, the more continuity you have with the performance. It's what I want to talk about also here, this mess which goes on here, which is that as you leave the corner, well, what's happening here, which is causing all this kind of problem. So if we move this quickly over to that side of the screen, as we're leaving the corner, let's have a quick look at the approach to that, by the way. So over the rise, breaking all the way in, pick the throttle up, and start your drive out. Now, what I was actually looking at there was from where I finished braking to where I picked the throttle up, which is quite close to the apex. How long is that? Can I improve that? Can I get onto the throttle a little bit earlier or can I potentially can I brake deeper into the corner? And that's what this is showing here. With this red trace here, where it actually meets the zero, that's where the brake effectively comes back to zero. So I've finished my braking at that point. But as you can see, for that short period of time, and let's have a look at it in actual, let's measure it from where the braking finishes and where the throttle starts to pick up. What we need to then start to look at is these little numbers at the top of the screen here. So when you're using your measurement tool, that's what these numbers start to mean up here. This one here, DS, and I've had to write it down here because we're all still learning at this point. When you've got it set up at the bottom for distance, which is what we have at the moment, it's measured in distance. So literally from me finishing the, letting the brake go to picking up the throttle was 8.6 meters. So it isn't a long distance as it were in time. And to be fair, there's always gonna be an element or a part of a corner where you just have to let the bike turn so there is a sort of a, a dead part of the corner but obviously if we can condense that as much as we can that helps even more the second you start to pick the throttle up obviously your acceleration then starts that's why the this line here start to climb at quite a steep rate with more or less matching the throttle and everything seems to go in really well from effectively the apex on the first drive out the corner and we're up to a point here where we're, we're over 10, so we're, we're 
almost 1G coming out of the corner. And then all of a sudden we go through this big hiccup here. And that hiccup more or less tallies with the first part of at the bottom of the scale here, this is DTC, which is your traction controls kicking in. And you can see also by the yellow line here, this is the ECU on the throttle. It takes a hit there. Even though I've got the throttle grip open, the ECU has kind of backed out of it a little bit, which is where the DTC is kicked in. And that, that's what this has happened here. Now, ideally, you want to try and keep that, that curve more consistent. As soon as you get any hit with the traction control or you ease back on the throttle for whatever reason you're going to stop that acceleration curve as it were and i just thought it was particularly fascinating to show an extra facet that we've brought in now i've also put on here rear wheel speeds we've got the red line here which is your gps speed that's the actual ground speed what's happening the orange line is front wheel speed and the white line is rear wheel speed now you can clearly see as we're coming into this area of the track the rear wheel speed is starting to get a little bit up and down up and down and particularly there it goes a little bit crazy so kind of what's happening here what caused that and why did all the, the all of a sudden you get an, an all awful lot of big peaks and troughs of traction which of course matches what's going on here with the throttle and you can even see i've backed out the throttle a little bit there so i need to figure out to myself what caused that and this is why what i use is the onboard recording so i can kind of see what's going on so if we quickly look at that arrive at the apex start the drive out and we ran onto the curb and even though the curbs are kind of usable you orderly you can only just hear a small amount of quavering with the engine engine note you can see on the screen itself the traction control is really cut in hard so no matter what i will be doing with the throttle grip regardless even though i did ease back a little bit there because if i, if I went off the red and white onto the green it got particularly bumpy that's what's kind of happening there this image here matches perfectly with what's going on on this screen here and you can in fact see the front wheel speed which is this orange line here how at some point it starts to lose speed even though the, the bike is accelerating and then it comes back with a hit and drops off again and comes back with a hit and effectively what's happening there is it's losing rotation because it's essentially wheeling. So the last part of this spike of traction control is almost certainly the anti-wheelie kicking in. I like the uh, anti-wheelie on the BM and I have quite a lot wound into it. But I would have to say here, it is a stay off the curbs a little bit more, but also this wheelie is also caused this second big dip in the acceleration curve instead of having a nice smoother radius to the curve. So all of the damage here is caused mostly by running onto the curb and then a couple of wheelies coming out. And I just thought that was a really interesting thing. And the only way you're gonna see that is by really zooming into it and putting quite a lot of data onto the screen so you can compare one aspect of the data to another aspect and get them to match up. I hope that kind of makes sense. Out of interest, if you're using data yourself, you may wanna use a white screen when you've got lots of information on. On the video, it's easier to view it when you've got it in a dark screen. The camera kind of takes it in a little bit better. That's one of the reasons why I use the black screen out of interest. So summing it up briefly, what we've talked about here is the, the difference the way the information is laid out on the screen. And that is done by altering the parameters of input, if you will, on the channels. So effectively, you're moving where the data is going to come up on the screen. And creating a datum line, which is a zero line, and putting positive things like throttle above it, braking below it, and you can have the speed traces more or less wherever you want them. And the way it's, it's done here is fractionally below the zero line. And then things like your traction control, you can shove that right to the bottom of the screen because you just need to know the when that's happening as really as opposed to the volume of it sometimes. But as always, you've got the your shift button. You've got your little data chart here, which comes up with the actual value of what it is at any one point. Arranging it on the screen really starts to help to make the difference it certainly was a game changer for me from perspective of trying to understand it particularly with a lot of information on the screen organizing it so it actually 
makes sense and looks better.